The question for today is, are you above your set point? So your set point is a controversial topic because it suggests weight loss. And in the intuitive eating, health at every size movement, we actually uh, let go of weight loss, as I like to say. That's the big enlightenment, weight loss enlightenment. Let go of weight loss. But in health at every size, in this, you know, one of the foundational books that really uh, kick-started this movement there is a part that asks, are you above your set point? That's on page 28. So I thought this was really, really fascinating because the conversation around set point often makes it sound like you're above your set point. Therefore, if you follow this plan, you will go back to your set point, which happens to be less weight. So it sounds like a weight loss plan in disguise. So the question is, how do you talk about set points, right? Here we have set point in one of the, the foundational texts in a movement that doesn't emphasize weight loss. How does that go together? And what can we do practically speaking? Well, um, my opinion, my humble opinion is that set point can be a useful topic to give hope to people in the initial part. As they say in this, they ask these questions. And if you answer yes to these questions, uh, Linda Bacon says you will probably are above your set point. And if you're above your set point, when you start learning intuitive eating, you'll probably go to your normal set point, not lower, just your normal set point, a, which might be a lower weight. Now. The danger is then thinking, oh, okay, I answered yes to some of these questions. I'll go over these, some, some of these questions in a little bit. The danger is thinking, oh, yes, I answered yes to some of these questions. So that means that when I do intuitive eating, I'll lose weight. And we don't want to think that way. It's this paradox. We want to be able to hold contradictory ideas together at the same time without one having to be better than the other. This is a complex topic. And so it can be helpful for beginners and people who are getting into, it, into intuitive eating, especially those if you struggle with binge eating, emotional eating, disordered eating, some sort of thing where you eat a little bit too much, which often is the case. It can be inspiring, it can be hopeful, it can be meaningful, it can uh, be relevant to you when you first hear about intuitive eating to hear that your set point might be higher than what it was so that you gain hope that you'll lose weight. That's a good thing. The bad thing is, is that when you have hope you're gonna lose weight, oftentimes you will filter, you will have these imaginary glasses on where you perceive intuitive eating through the lens of weight loss. You judge your success or failure by weight loss, which is not what we wanna do. Remember, weight loss enlightenment Enlightenment, we want to let go of weight loss. It's huge. So if you're trying to do this intuitive eating thing, thinking that you're gonna to go to a lower set point, you probably are gonna judge and think and evaluate your success if you lost weight. And that is not good. It's really not good. It's really not good because so many, so many things that come up, one, you're reinforcing, like the whole weight loss alignment is about the weight, the thought of weight loss, the energy behind that thought is like an obsession, a fear, a worry, a stress. You know, we think about weight loss, just saying it sounds like a burden, right? Well, in yoga, in, in Buddhism, in this whole spiritual tradition, in, in the law of attraction, what we focus on energetically grows. So if you focus on obsessively, fearfully, stressfully on losing weight, guess what's going to happen? You're not going to lose weight. Your stress is and it's going to go up. Your problems are going to go up. So if we focus on weight loss obsessively, we're, we're actually going to, it's going to backfire and we're going to regain all the weight. So this intuitive eating movement initially sounds promising because it's like, oh, it's a new way of losing weight. But we don't want that. We really don't want that. We really don't want that. We really don't want that. You want to 
be able to hold contradictory topics in your head at the same time. That intuitive eating is great for your health. When you're more attuned with your body, you're going to feel happier. You're going to be more joyous. You're going to have an expanded life. Your intuition is going to creep into other areas. You're going to be a, a better navigator of life. You're going to be like a surfer who's able to, instead of crash when, when life gives them a wave, you're going to be surfing the wave and you're going to feel adept and calm and confident at life. But we want to have that in mind and we also want to forget about weight loss. We want to forget about it. Because your health, your well-being, it's much more than just um, than just weight loss. It's much, much more than that. It really is. And when you think about weight loss, like sometimes it's an umbrella catch-all phrase. It becomes, you know, if I lose weight, then I'll be more attractive. People will love me. People, I'll be more confident. I'll be better at work. If only I um, lost weight my life would be so much better if only I lost weight. So we need to let go of weight loss. We need to let go of it. And at the same time, we need to know that if we do this intuitive eating process and stick with it one, two, three, four, five months, six months, a year, you know, this isn't, this isn't like a magic bullet thing. This is like, give it a year, give it a year and, and, and put weight loss in the back burner. Learn these things that intuitive eating is so good for and watch, watch. If you answer yes to these questions, you probably will lose weight, but then forget about losing weight. It's like, get your, get, get inspired that you might lose weight. If that inspires you, good, get inspired. You'll, you'll probably lose weight if you answer yes to these questions, but then forget about it. Seriously, you gotta forget about it. You gotta forget about it. You gotta immediately drop it. We gotta hold contradictory topics, uh, complex topics. Eh. We wanna hold contradictory ideas at the same time. This is really, it's okay to be inspired by weight loss. It's okay to be inspired by well-being and happiness and the thought that you're probably um, a little bit above your set point because you're not attuned to your body. It's okay to be inspired by that. But then when you start to attune your, in tune to your body, it's not going to be this straight downward hill. You might gain weight the first three months. You know, are you going to be able to stick with something for a year if, if, if you're judging it by success or failure, are you really going to do the hard work? Because this is just hard work. It's just hard. It's gritty. It's freaking gnarly. You know, are you going to be able to do the hard work if you're judging yourself? If your body isn't changing the way you want it to? Well, guess what? You're not going to be able to do the hard work because you're going to judge your, your success as a... You're going to judge your attempts as a failure. And whenever you label yourself as a failure, you just stop. You stop doing it. So we need to be inspired by the potential that we can become a happier, improved, better version of ourselves, more attuned, loving, and self-caring. But at the same time, we need to drop any sort of notions that we're going to lose weight and do it for the joy of becoming an intuitive eater. I love it. Here are the questions. Do you have difficulty recognizing when you're hungry and when you've had enough food? Do you routinely eat beyond a comfortable level of fullness and feel lethargic, stuffed, and uncomfortable after meals? Do you go through periods where you eat out of control, anticipating that you will soon start to diet? Do you skip meals in an effort to lose weight, then overeat because you are so hungry? Do you skip meals to save up for a big feast? Do you often eat as a coping mechanism? For example, when you're tired, angry, or nervous. How about killing time when you're bored? Do you often feel guilty around some of the foods or the amount of food you eat? Blah, blah, blah. If you answer yes to some of those questions, you're probably above your... Set point. That means intuitive eating, you might lower your set point. That might inspire you. And then start the intuitive eating journey. Commit to the process without worrying about weight loss. Let weight loss go. Enlighten yourself. Now, what I'm doing right now, if you go to weightlossenlightenment.com forward slash free strategy session, there's going to be someone who talks about all the benefits of emotional eating aside from weight loss. And then you can schedule a free, complimentary, no obligation conversation with me. I love talking about with this stuff. This is a chance for me to just get into you, help you overcome one major problem, which we can do in a call, one problem. And then if you want to move forward, you can, there's no hard pressure sales tactics or anything like that. This is just a chance for us to connect. And I love if this message is resonating with you and you can, you get that idea of holding contradictory ideas, go schedule that session right now weightlossenlightenment.com forward slash free strategy session. It's no obligation. It's fun. We're going to connect. 
I hope to see you soon. Peace out.